All right, so in this mini lecture, we're going to talk about um, uh, Australopithecines, um, uh, and there's two categories, gracile versus robust. So uh, as hopefully you've uh, been reading, uh, gracile simply means that it's more sort of lightly or thinly built. Uh, robust is more largely built. And I'm not going to talk about this um, in, in, in this uh, uh, small lecture, but again, one of the sort of debates or controversies uh, in the discussion between robust versus gracile australopithecines is actually do we call both of them by the genus Australopithecus. There is a growing uh, consensus in the anthropological and, and larger scientific community that the robust form is going to be called by the genus Paranthropus. Uh, so, uh, but I'm going to talk about both forms. Um, <clears throat> again, the gracile form in, uh, to your left is the smaller, more sort of uh, thinly uh, built, and the robust form in, uh, as to your right as you look at it is larger. And so there's obvious difference in size. So one of the main characteristics between the two is going to be the difference in overall size. It is important to keep in mind, though, that with the difference in size, there is very little difference in brain size. So the cranial capacity between these two uh, types of hominid is not that much. So um, the second uh, character, large, uh, uh, more broad characteristic is this thing called mega dancha. So mega large dancha has to do with your teeth. Both um, gracile and robust australopithecines have really large teeth compared to us. Gracile forms their teeth um, and especially their molars, their back teeth, are um, much larger than ours. I'm going to go out of screen. Compared to modern humans, gracile uh, forms, their molars are about twice the size of modern humans. This is even more pronounced with the robust forms. The robust australopithecines, uh, their molars are about four times larger than the teeth of modern humans. But their front teeth are not. Their front teeth are about the same size as ours. So, and this is argued to be associated with diet. Uh, robust australopithecines ate a diet of very tough foods. Uh, roots, tubers, uh, seeds, nuts, things like this. And uh, so these uh, really huge back teeth would be um, good for uh, grinding uh, the, these really tough uh, kinds of foods. So um, that dash uh, is called a diast. What, what is a diastema? So I'm going to bring out this um, gorilla skull. Um, and so this space between the incisors and the canine is called a diastema. One of the characteristics, as you've already read about, um, between us and um, our ape cousins is that the canine tooth has gotten smaller. And as the canine tooth gets smaller, 
there is less need for a diastema to, uh, to provide the space for um, the, the large canines so we can close our, so they can close their mouth. With the, the uh, decrease in size of the canine, the diastema goes away. <clears throat> Gracil australopithecines maintain a very small diastema, but the robust forms have no diastema at all. So that would be one of the differences uh, between uh, robust and uh, gracile australopithecines. Um, I'm going to skip ahead to point seven. Um, and I'll talk about this while it's on my brain. So one of the trends that you've read about already in regard to um, uh, hominids um, in our hominid line is that there is a general change in the shape of the dental arcade and that that is associated with the shape of the, of the upper tooth row. And in humans, our dental arcade is uh, more curved. It's called parabolic, right? So it, it looks uh, kind of like an arch. And the dental arcade in apes is more rectangular. And there's good images in your textbook to show these differences. Um, so one of the differences between gracile and australopithecines or gracil and robust, excuse me, gracil and robust has to do with the uh, dental arcade shape. Um, robust australopithecines are the only one of our ancestors that have a more rectangular dental arcade where the gracil australopithecines have a more uh, rounded, even though the ar dental arcade compared to us, of course, is still much longer and, and um, the angle isn't as, uh, uh, the, the curve isn't as dramatic as us, this is still very much in line with, with um, characteristics of hominids. Okay, let's go back. So the third uh, characteristic. So with this um, uh, transition uh, for robust australopithecines to be eating really, really hard foods, having um, much bigger teeth, even than grasses that have big teeth, is that there's an extra bony growth on the top part of the skull. And that extra bony growth is called a sagittal crest. Robust australopithecines are the only hominid to have this. So this is one of the main ways to determine uh, robust australopithecines from any other kind of hominid. For this uh, fourth uh, uh, entry, um, there's a number of traits that are all associated with sort of the shape of the face. Um, and again, these are argued to be associated with dietary change that robust uh, underwent that gracile's did not. So first, uh, dished face. So the shape of the face around the eyes is more vertical, and then there is a, a curve for the projection of the face, which you've already read about, that projection is called prognathism, right? Whereas with the gracile australopithecines, you don't have as much of a, a sort of rounded or dished shape. Instead, what you have is a more sort of straight angled sort of shape going from the nose down into the lower face. So that's that dished face. Uh, second uh, entry, the slash of flared cheekbones with the robust australopithecines. Their cheekbones are more sort of uh, forward facing and more uh, prominent than with the gracile forms. And then the third entry, 
has to do with the shape of the eye orbits that with um, uh, robust forms they have the more rounded eye orbits and the gracile forms are a little more sort of squared for lack of a better way to say it. Um, then the um, final one that I'll write up in a moment has to do with um, the muscle attachment uh, locations. So I talked about the sagittal crest and the, where there's extra uh, attachments for the muscles of the cheeks. And this shows into here. Um, and so with those, uh, um, there's pinching behind the skull uh, and that's called post-orbital constriction. I'll write it on the board. Um, and there is a, a lot of space for really large uh, chewing muscles. The gracile forms have large chewing muscles compared to us, but the, with the robust forms, the difference is much more dramatic. The robust forms have muscle attachments that are similar as what you see in modern day black bears. Okay. So post orbital. All right, so the fifth point. So I talked about the general difference in size. Um, and so not only is there a difference in the size of the skulls um, between uh, the gracile forms and the robust forms, but, but uh, as you've already read about, there is uh, sexual dimorphism uh, between hominids. So how big are the females versus how big are the males? Um, with the gracile forms, um, the sexual dimorphism is uh, something like 30%. So the males are 30% larger than the females, which is much more than what we see with modern humans, right? Um, but with robust forms, the sexual dimorphism is even greater. It's maybe as much as 50%. Um, and so the females for gracile australopithecines and the females for robust were, con were uh, estimated to be about the same size, but the males were larger. Um, but keep in mind, um, these are still uh, small animals compared to us. They're more closely associated with the size of chimpanzees um, than with us. All right, so uh, the sixth thing to bring up, um, there is no evidence of robust australopithecines using stone tools. Um, we have not yet found remains of, of robust australopithecines in association with stone tools. Um, in recent years, we have found gracile australopithecines uh, in East Africa uh, associated with stone tools. So now the conventional wisdom is that the first uh, stone tool makers and stone tool users were some species of gracile australopithecine. And so then this last thing to bring up, um, there are several species of gracile australopithecines that are listed in your books. Um, uh, there are three species of robust australopithecines um, uh, and found throughout Africa. Um, some species of gracile australopithecine evolved into robust australopithecines and some species of gracile australopithecine, different species, some species of gracile australopithecine evolved into the first uh, member of the genus Homo. So some form of gracile australopithecine evolved into Homo habilis um, and also uh, different uh, species of gracile evolved into um, uh, 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 Paranthropus or Australopithecus um, Aethiopicus. <clears throat> 